This is section 2.5, Transformation of Functions. And I'm going to start off the section by saying that you need to memorize um, the algebra of the most common graphs. And these can be found in your textbooks on page 271. Um, if you go into your multimedia library, you can also find it on page 271 in your textbook. So let's start off with the constant function. And constant function is y equals c or f of x equals c. Remember f of x, same thing as y. c is just a number or a constant. It's something like y equals 1.5 or f of x equals 1.5. That'd be a graph that looks like this. Conta function. And again, I can't draw a straight line. I'll try it one more time. A little bit better right there. That would be a constant function. Then we have something called the constant function. We have something called the identity function. And that would be uh, y equals x or f of x equals x. Well, that means that no matter what you pick for x, the same value is for y. It's like 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 0, 0, negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 2, negative 3, negative 3, negative 4, negative 4. And the next one we have, we've actually done this one a lot, for the absolute value function. If you were in class, I talked about how the absolute value function is always a V-shape. So y equals absolute value of x, or f of x equals absolute value of x. And this one's pretty easy to memorize, because if you take, um, you put 1 in for x, put 1 in here, with the absolute value of 1, it would be 1. So 1, 1. Absolute value 2 would be 2. Absolute value 3 would be 3. Absolute value 4 would be 4. But if you were to pick negative 1, let's say you did negative 1, the absolute value of negative 1 would be 1. When you let x equal negative 1, your y value positive 1. Absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2, and so on. And then the absolute value of 0 is 0. So 0, 0 is a point. Next one is the standard quadratic function. In the standard quadratic function, we're going to use a lot of in this class, um, in the coming um, exams. So you want to memorize this one. The standard quadratic function. And this is y equals x squared or f of x equals x squared. Again, if you don't memorize this, you can actually come up with this function on your own um, with a table. If I pick uh, 0 for x and put 0 right into here, 0 squared is 0, so 0, 0 is a point. If I pick 1 for x, 1 squared would be 1, the so 1, 1. If I pick 2 in for x, that would be 4, so 2, 4. And if I pick 3, 9, the 3, 9 would be a point by around graph paper. So put that. What if I pick negative 1? Well, negative 1 squared equals 1. So I get negative 1, 1. I do negative 2, I get negative 2 squared. And I get 4. Negative 2, 4. The next one is the square root function. And that is y equals the square root of x, or f of x equals the square root of x. And if I plug in 0 for x, 
square root of 0 is 0, so 0, 0 will be a point. If I plug in 1, I would get the square root of 1, which is 1, the 1, 1. If I plug in 4, square root of 4 is 2. Notice I didn't pick 2 because that would have been ugly. Now I can't plug in negative 1 because the square root of negative 1 is unreal or not real. So there's no uh, real number for y there. So that's the square root function right here. Okay, the next one is the standard cube function. Let's do that in um, gray. So standard cubic function. And that is y equals x cubed or f of x equals x cubed. So I put in 0 for x, I get 0 to the third power, which is 0, so 0, 0 is a point. Put 1 in for x, 1 to the third power of 1, so 1, 1. Put 2 in there, 2 to the third power of 8, the 2, 8. Now what happens if I put in negative 1? But negative 1 to the third power gives me negative 1. So negative 1, negative 1. I put negative 2 in for x, I get negative 8. The standard cubic function looks like this. Notice I'm not really memorizing it. I'm actually coming up with points um, on these common graphs, so really you don't need to memorize it. I'm just putting in values in for x and finding y. I'm not really making a table. I'm doing it in my head, but, but you can't make a table. Okay, the last one is the standard cube root function. y equals the cube root of x, or f of x equals the cube root of x. So I can put in 0 into here for x, cube root of 0 is 0, so 0, 0 is a point. I put in 1 here, cube root of 1 is 1. I put in 8 there, so if I put 8 into here, cube root of 8 is 2. Okay. Now the cube root of negative 1, if I put a negative 1 in there, the cube root of negative 1 would be negative 1. So I get negative 1, negative 1. The cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. Sometimes students ask me, well, how come this is not real? Well, remember, go back to that P chat we talked about. Um, the cube root of negative 8 is fine because um, negative 2 to the third power is negative 8. Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is 4 times negative 2, which is negative 8. When we have the square root of negative 1, that's not real because there's nothing squared that will equal negative 1. Okay? So keep that in mind. Recall this problem. We actually did this problem, I believe, in the previous section. Um, let me go back. Let me pause the video for a second. Let me go back to my notes. Okay, so I looked at my video or I looked at my notes. And if you were, if you're in class, we did this problem together in our class activity. And so, if we, if you're in my online class, all I did here was I went ahead and graphed the function f of x equals absolute value of x. That's this function right here. So that's a standard, that's a common graph actually, but I went ahead and made a table here and showed you how I got that. Then I went ahead and graphed g of x equals the absolute value of x minus 4. So I actually made a table 
become a bunch of ordered pairs, and that will be this graph right here. Okay? And then you'll notice that this function g of x is basically the same function as f of x, but just shifted down four units. Okay? But notice the original function here. This one is the absolute value of x. This one is the absolute value of x minus four. And this is just shifted down four units. So if you take any of the common graphs and you add a constant to it, or you subtract a constant to it, you're basically shifting the graph up and down a certain number of units. So if you hit plus C or add a constant, you shift the graph up C units. And if you do minus C, you shift the graph, shifts, graph, down. C units. Okay. So again, I don't have now I don't have to do this anymore. I did it by hand, I made a table, and made that common graph right there. Then I made another table and plot all the points, figure all the points, and plotted that function. But if I noticed it looked at it very carefully, all I did was take this graph and shift it down four units. So I don't need to do these tables anymore. Let's look at example one. Use the graph of f of x equals absolute value of x to obtain the graph g of x equals absolute value of x plus 3. So I'm going to do it in black. I'm going to go ahead and do the common graph f of x equals absolute value of x. We know what that graph looks like. We've either memorized it or we know that this is a common graph or you can make a little table in your head. There it is. f of x equals f of y of x. Now the g of x function is basically the f of x function which is x absolute value of x but all I'm doing is adding 3 to the end of it. So I'm shifting that graph up 3 units. That plus 3 means I'm shifting the graph up 3 units. So I'm going to take this graph I have over here and take every point and move up 3 units. This is why very important to have points on the common graph. So I'll move that point up three units, that one up three units, that one up three units, Oops. three units, So this word is actually um, helpful to have color pencils. So if you're in my um, class, hopefully you brought your color pencils to class. And if you are um, in my online class, it's a great time to pull out your color pencils. So this is your g of x function equals absolute value of x plus 3. Now you don't have to label this part if you don't want to. As long as you label the f of x and g of x, I can, uh, I can look at your answers and see if it's right. So example two, um, whenever you have a function and you're adding a number or a constant to just the x or subtracting a constant just to the x, you're shifting the graph left or right based on what you're doing. If you add a constant, you're actually shifting it to the left. When you subtract a constant, you actually shift it to the right. So let's look at example two. Notice how this is the, the common graph that we'll look at in just a second, but notice how I'm adding five to actually just the x. I'm not adding five to the n. So this is different than this. I'm not doing this. So if I had this, this would be added to the n and I'd be shifting up or down. Okay. What I'm doing is I'm adding five to wherever the x is. That's the left or right movement. In this case, I'm adding 5, so that's going to be a shift to the left unit. Okay, so we're going to shift to the left 5 units. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and graph my common graph, and actually I'm getting ready to run out of time right now, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the video, and I'll start back with an example. And so I'm going to go ahead and stop, and then finish it up.